Hello guys and girls, Pixel2000 here, and welcome to a behind the scenes showcase of Into the Labyrinth PMV. So, I know a lot of you people have been saying um, in the comments, Pixel, please make a tutorial about this, or please make a tutorial about this other thing. But just, the thing is, I don't make tutorials because, like, um, I'm not really good at explaining things, and also my, like, hardware to, like, actually record. But, anyways, since Mm, I was thinking of doing a behind the scenes time lapse with this PMB, um, like I did with the Idols PMB. But since I didn't do it because it would be boring because it's mostly just me arranging a bunch of clips on like Idols PMB, which was motion graphics and all that stuff. So yeah, this um, this this person um, on YouTube commented if um, to do a tutorial on the PMB. So basically, yes. I agreed to like make a behind the scenes of it. So basically, okay, let me just put this here. This is the entire main composition of the PMB. It's based on like um, uh, adjustment layers and composition. With each one has like a different section. In here, I only have sections one, five, and six in the final section. The thing is, I already pre-rendered the one to four be before continuing here um i don't remember why i did that though but i yes i actually pre-rendered but still i still have the compositions here and i can show it to you so here is like the freaking um first section which is after the, the title is i mean not the title the intro is the loading and then the music and like like goes over here and like doom doom like right here Oops, what the hell? Why isn't... Okay, minor glitch setback. There's no... Um, audio? Oh yeah, it's because I don't have it. But yeah, it's basically this part right here. Yeah, that part to the beginning. Over here. And like... So, then there's section 2, which I use even more clips. It's like miniaturized right here. Over here, basically, what I just I didn't do much effects, I just apply like opacity change in each of them. So, here's everything in the section um, the opacity, and also in some of them you notice in the PMB, I use I use like a RGB split. I did not use Twitch, <laughs> my cell phone is like already. Um, basically, in here, I did not use um. Which I just did it manually to sync it into the song, and I did this method with the um, let me show it here. Let me see if it loads. Yeah, as you can notice, actually, there's a bit of weird wiggly blur lines and not uh, here and there it's because I use um, real smart motion blur for the clips, so they look more smoother and, and like transition, like look more smoother and all that so yeah so okay, the the rgb splits take more time to load because like three separate videos Bas okay so now in here um it loaded finally um in here i have the rgb split as you can see like i have uh, um the red the green it's actually green no. hello there we go red the green and the blue and combine them all i have the this one with the screen mode and I got a bunch of keyframes here, which is this, the speed because in some of these clips, as you can notice, like I use like I sync it to the song, like slow, present slow, like sync it to the song, and position for the RGB split effect to take place, and the opacity, as so as the other clips. And I have the effects here: time warp, uh, hue and saturation. Um, actually, I use hue and saturation for each. For the whole clip, because I wanted to look the colors to look more vibrant and more contrasted. And so, set channels for the RGB split. I only left the blue, and here only left the here. Only left the green one here, and so on, so on. And yeah, so it keeps going on like that. A bunch of clips. And okay, not responding. Good. So here's section three. I have um, yeah. More clips. Yeah, so in here, like, as you can see in the PMB, I just like transition, like, 
like change clips, scenes, and all that. Except for the the part where Twilight's um, tear appear and then like fades out black each time. Oh. <sighs> it's waiting to load. Lim <laughs> car. Hello, hello. You might be wondering how can I work with this much slowness on my computer? Well, yeah. How can I work much with a lot of slowness on my computer? Well, yeah, I got used to it. Um, hopefully by maybe the end of the year or something, I might get a new computer. Okay, so here's the Twilight uh, scene with the tear. Okay, it's loading because I use Time Warp and Time Warp takes a lot of processing. I mean, I could have used Twixter, which is kind of like Time Warp or more advanced and stuff. But while I was editing this, I didn't have Twixter. I downloaded it recently and it's pretty cool. Alright, so here, here we are. The, um, so here's the speed, it goes like from yeah, caps. So it goes 200 and it goes like um, 100. I tried to sync it to the song, like I listen to when I'm editing PMVs, especially this one, I had to like repeat, repeat, listen, listen to a section of a song so I can like um, time it correctly. So here's section 4, this is after the um, uh, Twilight Tear scene where it says into the lyric PMV, which I have right here. Um, I did it separately from the video because I forgot to add it. And text and then go to section 4 to the part where Chrysalis um, invades. And as you can see, not only did I put episodes, but I also use um, fan videos. Um, I kind of wanted to go to something new here, and also, like, since I wanted this episode, I mean, this PMD to be dark and action packed. I decided to use animations, but maintaining the 2D aspect animation because um, I didn't want to use um, Source Filmmaker um, or Garrick's Mod. And here I didn't use much um, keyframes, um, I just put them all together. It says Smile HD, I don't know, uh, it's kind of noticeable, but yeah, I did an RGB split, but very long. For everyone, I like um, changed to like a, a red hue, like I removed the greens. To the power, like it changes, you know. And yeah, the smile HD, I put the RGB split, and so after that, there goes the action scenes, which is like section five, six. Here, I did put even more timing. I had to take even more time to like time each scene to the mu to the beat of the music. Um, compa uh, with, combined with the action scenes, like the punches and all that. So here, I got all the clips. And then some of them I use slow motion and like in the smile easy one after pinky punches um, ring dash um, I use the um, saturation low and I lower the clip um, I put it slow I actually use um, where is it time stretch I use this and stretch it to 300 time stretch basically like you can slow down or speed out the whole clip the whole clip. Um, put in a much higher value, the stretch factor will put it slower, and the lower value will put it uh, faster video. That is, that's only for the whole clip. If you want to slow down specific clips, use Time Warp, or if it's possible, use Twixter. That one is pretty cool. Um, I didn't use it in this one. Section six, uh, 6. Wow. Section 6. In this one, I use a lot of shape layers because this is part where the motion graphics happen, like the twilight motion graphic thing. I'm gonna show all the keyframes here. Uh, where is it? Keyframes. In this one I did use a lot of keyframe and um, expressions. Expressions come in really handy when you get to know a few. The only one I know so far is wiggle and to connect effects with sound keys and all that. But I do know a few others that I learned recently, but yeah. So there's the optical flare, the flare, wiggle. Twilight train scene, I will show that in a few moments. Um, the Twilight train scene, I did that separately in another project. Along with a Photoshop file for the Twilight vector. The optical flares for the train passing by. The motion graphics renders faster than um, previewing a video for some reason. So yeah, it's like the the motion graphics scene, like 
I use the shaped and like shaped it to the Twilight Skating Mag in polygon form. So yeah, that's the like the square uh, motion graphics one. I name it. I name it all. Yeah. So here's the, the square square one, which is the outline. Square three, which is uh, one in the middle, I think. Or square t no, square two is this one. Square three, I forgot. Oh yeah, square three is the one that appears right here. This one, the one that turns everything black. And key mark appears, and like I use uh, twilight squares, and I use the mate, which is basically re, re um, duplicating the square three, like use it as a mate for for the key mark, so it only appears when the black square like appears okay so yeah in here I use the particles which is right here that one I can put the keyframe slow I use in particular um, I use the emitter which is right here I keyframe the emitter to go follow the square and then shoot out the, the particles with physics like gravity and all that stuff and so some other stuff like this the uh, okay, it's loading. Now it's loading the f another vector, Jesus Christ. So yeah, this is the other part which like like square appears and then it that uh, the square appears and then it lowers down, shows the toilet vector, pixelates and um, two lines go out. All that stuff. I use a lot of transitions here that I've been learning recently. Like I learned I learned how to make transitions mostly by watching other um, PMVs or motion graphics video and some others which I don't know how to do it, I just watch tutorials. But most of the After Effects I know, I learn it to experience and all that. And here's, uh, this one is pretty, it took me a while to do that, to learn that. Um, I actually use the um, masks, like I use this one, this one. Yeah, I use those mask to mask out the circle because like I, what I did is I, I put it a circle the same size as a triangle which is this one and then so I mask it out only a few and to achieve the effect like when the line comes out it slices the thing and for that I use like Wi-Fi um, and then I like, like distort the, mer the mesh the mesh. Distortion mesh. I use that and like I just move that. And yeah, the triangle cutout. I use the uh, I use the um the pen tool. And, like I make the lines. Each one is a different shape, of course. And then I do the stroke and like I keyframe it. So yeah, and then this part, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, this part right here basically the, the triangle I duplicate it and I make it only the stroke and so I use the um, the expression where is it puck and bloat puck and bloat and when you like like pucker and blow it and all that you know and I make that effect and then yeah and I also use a polystar since um, it's the one that has the triangle and also I can change different shapes and after this part I basically added more edges to the shape and after that in this part right here the twilight one it's loading again okay, so in this part right here I basically like um, use a twilight scene and like I put it in a separate composition because it was giving me problems Basically, what I want to do is like remove the be the blue sky, um, lower the contrast to like if it was nighttime and all that. Um, I mean, actually open the composition. So here's the composition. Uh, if, you tell, if I turn off all the effects, that's what we have, and then turn on. It's like nighttime. It's like you change. So basically, I use the color key to remove the sky here. The simple choker to like. Um, because sometimes when you use, try to remove green screens or anything like that, it looks pixelated, but uh, full. Okay, there we go. Um, right there, a simple choker like tries to like, like push the 
the mask that are oh, saving, how to save, yeah. Good, because, well, anyway, they're not using it. Brightness and contrast, the curves, I basically use that. It's full. The curves are right there, like, they added more. I forgot why they used the curves. Oh, yeah, the curves for, like, remove a bit of red and a bit of. Yeah, a bit of red to make it like that purpley, bluish on um, nighttime. Does you can't really notice much, but yeah. And then I used to contrast, and it was giving me problems. So yeah, I basically rendered it out in a separate composition because it wouldn't like let me for some reason the the color key will mess up with the time warp, so I made it separately. The time warp for the like. Like, um, sync it with a sign, mm -mm -mm. like that. And a bit of mosaic for the part of the song, which sounds like, like, uh, crushed, uh, pixelated, and all that. So, the final section, so we can finish this, and I'll show you the Twilight Train section. Uh, final section, and there I use the final scenes, which were like, um, just the final scenes after that, which was like put a bunch of clips together, and then the interesting part right here, which I'm gonna show some um, here, the glitch effect. Basically, use a bunch of keyframing and um, masking out fraction noise. Oh yeah, fraction noise. I was like, what? What do I have there? Um, fraction noise is basically for the um, this the glitch effect. Basically, have it there. Uh, glitch, the the other glitch which is pixelated and like yeah, uh, there you have a mosaic and the uh, transform which is basically like um half eh. there like the transform like makes it move the only certain parts because like I put it to trick mat with a fraction noise only. And yeah, that's basically the right there, the main composition of that. Uh, right there. Now I'm gonna show the um, Twilight train scene. Yeah, so here's my whole project right here the compositions, I keep them organized. Train scene, there we go. Let's take a Yes, I have a bunch of copies of the internal library because, like, um, I tend to make a lot of backups because you never know what's gonna happen. Make her up a file, and I don't want to lose all that work. So it's loading. And there we go. Actually, I need to open Photoshop to show this. But yeah, basically, I use a Photoshop file for this. Um, like I, what I did is I did a vector of Twilight. I traced it myself, and I separated the body. I separate it from the tail, the main, and the main, the back of the main, so I can animate it um, manually. And the train vector, thanks to a certain DeviantArt user, the train, I've been trying to find a train vector for this scene, but I decided to use a normal My Little Pony one. And I downloaded the Illustrator file and like, I exported it in PNG, I think and put it in the scene the train as a composition like really long composition so it doesn't run out and here's the twilight scene let's see let's go to the composition there's a twilight a photoshop basically use a the puppet uh, where is it the puppet puppet paint tool right there and that did the um thing the animation, which if I play it out here, it will show. It does take a while to load because it's like, basically what it does, it like bends the shape of the, the PNG and makes that. So yeah, for that I kind of had to do a lot of keyframe manually, as you can see right here. Um, this one is the main, this one's the body. I'm, Wait, what? the body I think is keyframe. The back of the main, the main back and the tail, which is the one we're seeing focusing on right now. Uh, 
um, I had to do, like I said, I had to do a lot of keyframing there, like, I had to, like, s like try to recreate, like, if it was wind physics. It's not real physics, it's just animation and keyframing. So, the last thing right now is that after I did all the PMB, um, the main PMB, um, the, the render and that I showed you before, I rendered everything and I separated it into this composition and to this project. Um, I, I did it because for render times, it's just in case if um, if my computer crashes or anything, I have it separately. And so in here, I added the other extra bits of post process effect, like the CC toner, the color correction, the motion tile, which is the um, the shaking effect, turbulence space, which is like a BHS kind of distortion effect, uh, which is this, and if I turn it off, you can see right there. Because it, it looks kind of boring without the distortion in the song, so I just added those. The motion tile, I used it with the sound keys, you can see all the freaking keyframes right there in the sound keys. This right there, and CZ toner, which is the, um, the color correction, I used highlights, orange highlights, and dark Dark and Shadows um, purple, and I blend it with the original. The white flashes and the mosaic, which is the uh, part where the sound picks a, uh, the sound sounds like 8 bit right there. So you see. That one I keyframe it manually uh, again. Mm. And yeah, that's pretty much I have to show you for now. Um, yeah, that's into the Labyrinth PMB process. Um, I started working on this PMB since December of last year, 2014, and I got to finish it around um, uh, January 8th, I think, or 6th. I got to finish it right there and then upload it. Took me a while to do. I was planning on releasing it for New Year's, but since I didn't really work on it much, I just said, okay, let's just release it someday in January. And so there we go. So that's the process of making into the library PMB. I hope you. Uh, at least understand a few things, or understand how the process goes, and at least answer a few of your questions. If not, then leave some questions in the comments, I'll try to answer them if you're still confused or anything. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching, if you have any comments, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.